meeting with hospice on the 4th, opening the floodgates of donors. They have four or five deaths a day. Get ready. How about a deal on full embalmed spines? 950 bucks. But body parts weren't the only things bringing in the loot for Megan Hess. In court documents, a, fed, a former employee also said that Hess earned $40,000 by extracting and selling the gold teeth of some of the deceased. Reports suggest that she spent that money on a trip to Disney World. Now, Hess could get more than a decade in prison for what she did. Her mother and her business partner is expected to plead guilty as well next week. And this is not an isolated case. But how widespread is the problem? This woman, Ms. Hess, uh, she works at a funeral home and she's accused of stealing and selling deceased people's body parts. Um, hmm. But you know what she pled guilty to this week? Mail fraud, because that's the manner in which they were sending body parts around. But this is a very gruesome, gruesome story. First, let's check a look at a, take a look at Ms. Hess, uh, Megan Hess, I believe is her name. Um, is that the look of a person who's selling body parts out of a funeral home? I don't know. But apparently this is not just an isolated one off event, but we're gonna go to details of what she did do. She and her mother, they sometimes obtained consent from families to donate small tissue samples or tumors of their dead relatives. That's according to an indictment on this case. And on other occasions when their request was rejected, and sometimes they never brought up this topic at all. So they would ask the families of folks that died, Hey, we just want to maybe get rid of this tumor or, or tissue sample here. It's probably going to help with some kind of medical uh, procedure or, or, or research. Sounds like a noble thing to do. Instead, they're selling off body parts. And when even people would say no to that, they do it anyway. So in any case, the documents say that on hundreds of occasions, the funeral home operators would sell heads, torsos, arms, legs, or entire human bodies. And then frequently they delivered cremated remains to families with the suggestion that they were the remains of their relative when in fact they were not. It's also according to that indictment. So uh, she not only lied to the families, but she also lied to many of the people who were buying body parts as well. Cuz I mean, it's not like this is a noble business that she was involved in. She altered lab reports so that they, so that they had said that people had tested negative for diseases like HIV and hepatitis when they had actually tested positive. Again, also according to these authorities. That part I'm not sure if I care so much about because as folks buying body parts from this lady and having them sent in the mail, I don't think they deserve much, um, I guess, better business when it comes to the details behind the body parts uh, that they're buying. Um, so in 2017, by the way, the FBI also rated the Biological Resource Center, that's in Arizona. Because again, this is not just a one off event. There, they found a menu that lists body parts that this particular uh, funeral home, I guess, sold. Here's some of that list. Whole body with no shoulders or head. This is one from Arizona from back in 2017. $2,900. A torso with a head, $2,400. A whole spine, ugh, $950. An entire leg, $1,100. A whole foot, $450. A knee is $375. And a pelvis is $400. What are people doing with this stuff? This is weird. Um, there's more about this because FBI agents stumbled upon this shop of horrors, as you can imagine. And there's some of the findings that they also found again from Arizona. Large male torsos with limbs and genitalia removed, buckets and coolers with various body parts, including a bucket of heads, arms, and legs. Body parts piled on top of each other throughout the facility with no apparent identification. And steel freezers with frozen body parts inside, also with no identification. Maybe again, this is the second time today I'll be naive, Jessica. I didn't know this was happening. I didn't know this was happening. This is crazy. No, I heard about you know people stealing kidneys, people stealing organs, but people yeah. need those to live. This is sick. Like I think about what it would be like working at a funeral home. You're confronting death every single day, all day long. That's gotta mess up your brain to some extent, right? Bills are expensive, inflation's crazy. They've gotta make money somehow, but there is a market for this. Like there are people out there who are looking to buy these things. That's yeah. why they're doing it and that's sick. What is going on with those people that they wanna purchase this stuff? That is absolutely terrifying. And the fact that the charge is mail fraud, I'm pretty sure it's a felony to mutilate a dead body. I don't have strong feelings about what happens to my body after I die. But this is just sick and it shouldn't be happening, right? It's not like I feel attached to my physical form in any way. It's just like, this is weird. This is not something people should be doing while they're alive. Yeah, the people, the families are the ones that are mostly affected because now that's an extra added like slap in the face to whatever happened to their loved one, even if they died just peacefully and of old age and the bed surrounded by a family, then this happens. 
that's a huge like <laughs> violation of their trust and also the way they're gonna remember what happened to their family members. It just sucks, man. And again, yeah, it's not about the dead because I think we did a story a week ago where someone said they're concerned about how their body or something will be taken care of. I was like, I don't think they're gonna, you know, you're not really that connected to it at this point. It's the folks that have to then hear what's happened to you that actually loved you that have to go through things like this.